in a world of legendary heroes, one man will rise. Hercules. Hercules possessed a strength the world had never seen. A strength surpassed only by the power of his heart. What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. And Mythic Quest Raven's Banquet is a new TV show that is designed to sell Apple TV subscriptions. Now, I am of the mindset in terms of television that I don't want to buy anymore. I already paid for Netflix and Hulu. I have no interest in paying extra money for CBS All Access or extra money for Apple TV. In fact, I'm this close to just canceling it all because most of the time it's trash anyway. And I spend most of the, my other time here on YouTube or making YouTube videos. So why waste the money? But nonetheless, some people do enjoy their television. Some people do enjoy their Apple products and their Apple TV. And well, they have this new show, Mythic Quest, which is kind of bizarre to me. I mean, I get it. Wanting to profit off geekdom is a time-tested uh, methodology, as we've seen with Big Bang Theory. By the way, side rant, I strongly hate Big Bang Theory. The idea that it normalizes geekdom, no, it's still making fun of geeks. It isn't, isn't it, por it isn't portraying these guys as cool. It's laughing at them. And that's exactly what Big Bang Theory is. And all I have to do is answer all sorts of stupid questions now from my boomer grandparents and parents about, you know, physics and computers because they watch Big Bang Theory. God, that show sucks. The ladies are fine, though. Anyway, Mythic Quest run by or starring the guy from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. You know, I watched the original trailer and... I have a BA in women's studies. What exactly is women's studies? It follows the experiences of women and the contributions they've made to... Inquiry withdrawn. You know, oddly enough, there just weren't any laughs. I, maybe I was just, you know, I actually didn't know. When I first saw the trailer, I was like, oh, it's like they got some Ubisoft kind of combo thing going, which is a little bizarre. And watching the trailer, it was almost like what people think being a game developer is uh, versus what it's actually like. Uh, you know, one scene of the trailer has somebody walking in and they're like stabbing some sort of machine with a sledgehammer, or having some sort of freak down or freak out. And then they have this like, you know, they're trying to monetize Twitch streamers and and I get it. I mean, if the show was on regular TV, would I give it a, a, a watch? Maybe, maybe. However, it would appear all the media around it seems to be going on the woke angle. In fact, the first article I saw on the show uh, was Mythic Quest, uh, how it deals with the bad guys from WW2, Crunch, and more. How Apple's Mythic Quest handles gaming's controversies. Pass. I mean, that's a hard pass. Nope, I'm out. It's like that baby like walking in and be like, Boop. not interested. Apple TV Plus is preparing to launch a newest series, a Mythic Quest Raven's Banquet, a workplace comedy that takes viewers inside the development of a massively multiplayer online RPG. While finding the humor in video game development industries is the show's first priority, the project also gives Mythic Quest's creative team the ability to comment on a number of issues in the gaming and tech industries that they actually face on a regular basis. Quote, this was really just a function of making it feel authentic. It wasn't really that we wanted to look for a hot button issues per se, co-creator, executive producer, and star Rob uh, explained during a group interview at the TCA Winter Press Tour. It was that we were asking ourselves and asking co-producers, Ubisoft, and asking other experts that we brought in, what are the things that we're dealing with uh, every other workplace is dealing with right now, and what are the issues that are specific? to the gaming community. And the gaming industry is dealing with right now because we want to feel authentic to their experience as possible. Next sentence, well, you want to pay attention to this. He continued, it just so happens that Nazis are infiltrating social media. If you weren't out before, you're out now. I mean, who is this show for? 
And it's something that lots of social media companies are wrestling with. Indeed, an early episode in season one sees the Mythic Quest team try to figure out how to handle an influx of white supremacists using their platform to congregate. The series also tackles the issue of gender inequality in the games industry. On the show, Poppy Lee is the lead engineer, and producers point out how rare that is. We have obviously a cast that has lots of women in it, and the only way to be authentic about that and not be like, oh, this happens everywhere in gaming, was to talk about how unique it was that Poppy's in her position. To talk about how the other three women that we have on the show are in the lowest level positions of the company. Executive producer Megan Gann said, Pass! While the cast of the show is made up of equally of men and women, Gans was careful to note that the same isn't necessarily true in the game's development world. It's not, and that brings up conflict, and conflict is great for comedy, she added. Yeah, I love all those favorite beloved social justice comedies that you know everybody just tunes in every week to watch Lily sing. Oh wait, they don't. Another topic they'll talk about is crunch. Fine. Crunch is, you know, whatever. I mean, look, I'm over crunch. I don't care. You're, you know, at, at this point, the game's urinalism industry has ruined my uh, my um, understanding for, for crunch. I mean, if you look at, let's look at the article in Variety. You can see uh, right away. Ian is a chaotic creative mind behind Mythic Quest, a World of Warcraft-esque collaborative game. It's basically a ripoff that steadily generates millions even while feeding off consistent competitors. Fending off, sorry. So it's always sunny as preferred, blah, blah, blah. On the flip side of Ian's real secret weapon, Poppy, the brilliant young programmer who nonetheless spends half of her time trying to corral Ian's more ludicrous instincts. Nikado gives as good as she gets from Kennel McHelnini. Mick McHelnini. Nah, whatever. <laughs> Making Poppy and Ian a wonderful, compelling, odd couple. And then they, you know, there's never a hint of romance between them. Refreshing and, frankly, a necessary change of pace. But the real key to Poppy is the show's anchor and immediate standout is that she isn't some basic, annoyed voice of reason. She's ambitious, smart, power-hungry, and downright weird in her own right. At her best, or at least her funniest, she's engaged as she constantly has to keep proving herself and trying to make her own mark on Mythic Quest beyond making Ian's dreams come to life. Outside, the characters of the show are also smart in a way that it tackles some of the particular issues facing the industry it's depicting. One episode, for instance, has David scrambling to give an empowering tour of the office to a group of wide-eyed schoolgirls only to have the few female employees available confirm that even though they love it, yes, it's very hard to be a woman in gaming. Uh, what? I mean, who's going to watch this show? There's a line of the show where uh, one person jokes about like, Oh, you play the role of a, a beta cook so soy boy. Um, it's just, ugh, it doesn't work. It's like they're taking all of the the buzzwords of of uh, Twitter gamers, like capital G gamers, social justice people view gamers, not real gamers. This is a show that um, blue a, a comedy about how blue checks view gamers uh, as uninclusive and as brash and as um, against uh, women in gaming. And this is just going to push all the same narratives of the nerdy, smelly neckbeards that the world likes to laugh at. It's the same garbage recipe that uh, the Big Bang Theory had. And when I saw who was involved in it, I, you know, I wanted to give it a shot. You know, I think that uh, Rob... Charlie Day as executive, executive producers seems like the show would be good and maybe it will be long term. But one, I have no interest at all whatsoever in paying extra money for a show. When you look at the previews, you know, 32,000 views on the Ubisoft channel, 600 upvotes, 100 downvotes um, on Apple TV. Uh, 14 million views, 13K upvotes, 5.6 thousand downvotes. That's not a good ratio. And on top of that, having comments turned off, I don't think they understand who this really 
is going to work for. The show will work on uh, on boomers who think that the, the video game programming industry is just like a bunch of cool, rad millennials with cool haircuts and, and coffee addictions and, and energy drinks and, and loud music and big gamer headphones. That's not really how it works. That's not really how most game development uh, outlets work. That's not really uh, how gamers are. I mean, you don't have this guy smashing a vending machine in the middle of the... This stuff doesn't happen. Uh, but, you know, this is what happens when people try to profit off gamer culture. And I, for one, really look forward to the reviews coming in, especially the ones, you know, where the episodes where they're just, uh, you know, painting all, all gamers as evil neckbeards because I'm sure that's, that's what they're going to go for. So... Congratulations on another woke comedy that I'm sure will appeal to a few a few people. It'll appeal to critics. It'll probably be wildly applauded by critics and tanked in audience scores. We'll have to wait and see, I suppose, for Mythic Quest, Raven's Banquet, to tank on Apple TV. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.